thanks everyone for being here. Hopefully you're all staying warm and inside, uh, not braving that Midwest snowstorm out there. Um, just a couple more days until New Year's. So we're here gonna talk about some meals and entertainment deduction on your taxes. And, all right, today we're gonna do some firm introduction for new people who are in here and don't really know us. Um, I'll go through what our firm does and what we offer in terms of services. Uh, we'll talk about the before the 2018 tax cuts and job acts for those who know their 2017 taxes and um, before that go by that rule. And then 2018 onwards, we have the tax cuts and job act. Basically, what we're talking about today is concerning entertainment, the meals, and we're going to have very specific examples on those um, regulations that started in 2018. And then we'll have about two quizzes and I will just open the floor and you guys can um, answer those questions in the Q&A portion or the chat portion up there. And then we'll, if you guys have questions, feel free to put it in the box and at the end I'll um, take them on and try to answer them for you. And then we'll have our contact information at the end. Um, yep, so Ying is our CEO. She serves on the National Taxpayer Advocacy Panel, uh, a federal advisory committee to the IRS. Um, if you have any ideas of how to improve the IRS, please feel free to email Ying at ying at communitycpa.com. And in the subject, put TAP recommendation. And the IRS website is the best resource in terms of regulation and tax laws, if you ever need any answers, um, even IRS employees use that as their resource. And Ying has a book on Amazon. Um, that's the first of the series, appointment with Ying at 8 a.m., so starting up a business. And um, today, myself, uh, I'm Amanda, and I will introduce the firm, and I will talk about the meals and entertainment deductions. So our firm is a regional CPA firm. We provide accounting, payroll, audit, tax, estate planning, business consultation, and the likes that you can see the examples on the screen. And our staff collectively speaks nine languages. And we currently serve more than 9,000 clients in three locations, which is Des Moines, Iowa, Coralville, um, Iowa City, which is also Iowa. And then we have Bloomington, Minnesota. And the spirit of our firm is that we love to share our knowledge. We take your well-being personally, as we know if you do well, we will do well as well. So our firm website is listed there. And if you wanna see past videos, we have a link through the website or our YouTube channel. So go to www.communitycpa.com or just go to YouTube, put in Community CPA on the search bar and you should be able to find all the previous videos that we have um, broadcasted. And then you can follow us on Facebook and Twitter and stay tuned for any latest updates of our firm. We'll post uh, any of the videos and everything there as well. And moving on to the no responsibility disclaimer. Um, this webinar, so to speak, is part of our services to our clients and you in general um, in order to really understand and cope with the current pandemic and the economic situation, but we are not responsible for any damages uh, the attendees may suffer as a result of the following advice or information provided. Um, we are doing our best to stay informed. The current situation is very dynamic and fluid and information could change at any time. So any information and advice are not legal in nature, so should not be construed as such. Uh, please consult your own legal counsel if you need any legal advice. All right, so to kind of start off, give you a background of the meals and entertainment um, history of the taxes and how they were deducted in the past before the 2018 Tax Cuts and Jobs Act. The entertainment expenses incurred um, prior to the 2018 while, while actively conducting business is actually 50%. So any entertainment in the past, you could have taken it um, at 50% on your taxes. And then food and beverage expenses acquired in the course of doing business are also could be 50% as well. 
only in the event that the expenses are not unduly extravagant or and that the taxpayer or the, one or more of the employees was there when the food or beverages were being provided. So those two were applicable in 2017 and prior. In 2018, the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act really changed um, the entertainment portion of it and food and beverage. So they really just became more stringent in terms of what considered um, food and beverage or meals and your entertainment. So this was prior to the 2018. Moving to the 2018 uh, Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, they eliminated the deduction for entertainment, amusement, or recreation, which we will go into as well uh, in the next few slides. So they eliminated that deduction altogether. Um, before you could take 50%, but now you can't take it at all. It, it also did increase the scope of the deduction limitation for expenses related to meals um, that employers provided. So um, we'll also go into that even more specifically. We'll have examples as well. But basically, keep in mind that entertainment, you do not get to deduct that anymore. And then meals, you got to keep into mind what is going to fall into their scope of being able to be deducted. All right, let's start with entertainment, uh, because that's probably the one that everybody felt the um, change in because from 50% to almost nothing, zero, basically percentage deducted. Examples of entertainment, amusement, or recreation expenditures, those are eliminated. So dues and fees to any social, athletic, or sporting club, or any organization that has connections to facilities, and then amounts paid to membership for any business, pleasure, recreation, social club, those are entertainment, amusement, or recreation. So those are eliminated. And for a case in point, a let's say a situation where X invites Y, their business associate, to a college basketball game to discuss business. And this is where X purchased the tickets for both of them. The college basketball game is considered entertainment, even though you're discussing business, but this is entertainment. And therefore, X that purchased the tickets cannot deduct the cost of the tickets on set taxes. But when you're at an entertainment event, you're going to have meals, right? You're going to purchase snacks or food or beverages um, during that time when you're watching the entertainment. So example of food and beverage at an entertainment activity. Uh, these are considered also an entertainment expense and not deductible. So unless the cost is stated separately from the cost of the entertainment. So you have to be very careful when you're doing the accountability for this in terms of if it's part of a package or if it's separately. So it has separate bills and invoices, All right? So let's say X buys the dinner for Y uh, in the alumni tent before the game. And this cost is technically sold separately. So they would purchase it prior to the game or during the game, but it is separate from the entertainment ticket itself um, so therefore, that meal itself is 50% deductible. So you would take that uh, cost of that meal at 50%. However, on the flip side, if you did, so like X here, um, went to the basketball game again this time, but this time bought a suite that comes with a package of food, meals, um, drinks, everything. Um, basically, this is not purchased separately. So these are not tax deductible. So this would be in that same box as entertainment and you would not be able to deduct them at 50%. You would not be able to deduct them at all. And so for entertainment, I'm gonna go back a little bit just so maybe if you have questions, feel free to uh, put them in the box. Basically for entertainment, if your meals are within that package of the entertainment itself. It's not deductible. But if you're at a game, that's not deductible already. And you purchase a drink or a meal that's separate from that entertainment portion altogether, the meal is basically deducted at 50%, right? So make sure you keep those receipts pretty well documented. 
And then for meals itself, we're gonna go through a couple, a lot of examples of the 100% deductible and then the 50% deductible. So you wanna, um, as employers, you wanna definitely keep in mind all these. Um, we'll have these slides as well and video for you to be able to come back and reference. But if you want 100% deductible for food and beverage expense, your meal expenses for social or recreational event, such as a company picnic, holiday party, if you had a um, holiday party recently that you provided food and beverage for, or an employee recognition, career development kind of um, gathering for your employees, those are 100% deductible. And any food that is made available to the public for free, let's say through a promotional campaign that you wanted to do to get people to know your company more, um, know the food more or whatever services or products that you provide, that would be 100% as well. And then any food included as a taxable compensation to employees. So if you do have employees that you pay meals for, but you also make sure you, it's included in their pay stub um, or in their W-2 at the end of the year, that food is 100% deductible. And then for nonprofits, the meals and food that are part of a charity sporting event or any event that's specifically for the primary purpose of benefiting the nonprofit, that would be 100% deductible. And then for those at an entertainment ve venue where food and beverages are provided to public, again, keyword is public. That's why um, that would be able to be considered as 100% deductible, um, not just your employees and that for anything for advertising or sales presentation, that would be 100% deductible. And then switching gears, so that was the 100%. Now we're going into the 50% deductible. That's kind of the general expenses that you would have on a day-to-day -day basis. We would include like office snacks, especially coffee, soft drinks, a uh, bottle of water, donuts, anything like snacks related or beverages employ, uh, provided to employees on the business's premises itself, that would be 50% deductible. So any meals provided on employer's premises for the convenience of the employer. So the example we have here, if you're providing meals to your employees in order to keep them because they're working late or in your break room, and also for working weekends or being on call, it is your convenience as an employer to have them at that work. So that meal is a means of enticement, so to speak. Um, your exam, basically this is an example of 50% deductible as well. Um, we also have these listed meal expense for business meetings with your employees, stockholders, agents, and directors, 50%. And then meals during your business travels, and keep those receipts when you're traveling and you're getting fast food on the way, or um, if you ever do sit down for a meal, but 50% of that is gonna be deductible on your taxes. Then we have meals with people related to the business, such as clients, customers, and vendors, provided that there is a business purpose. You have to be able to justify that there is a business purpose or some benefit to the business as a result. So keep in mind, might not be able to justify something that's just a personal, if you have a personal relationship with someone and then you're taking them out to dinner, that would not count as 50% deductible. And then we have meal expenses by an employee during a business trip and you reimburse that to your employee. That is also 50%, even though the employee was reimbursed 100% for the cost of the meals. Again, this is because it's a benefit that you provided them for your own convenience. So that's why uh, this example would be a 50% deductible. And then reimbursements using per diem rates are always only 50% deductible. So if you're using that per diem rates for mileage or even um, stay, staying for people, something, um, those will be at 50% deductible. Okay, so we have a couple of uh, questions here for people. Um, feel free to answer them. But basically, 
first question is, if you pay for your client's night out or a dinner, but you don't go with them, is it deductible? Um, it's just a yes or no question. So feel free to answer that. I'll give you about a minute or half a minute. Really good couple, I guess. So if you pay for your client's night out and you don't go with them, it is not deductible. So um, you have to be there with them that you will only count it as a business uh, related expense. So then only it would be considered as tax deductible. The second one, which is the flip of the first one only. So if you do play for your clients again and you do go with them as well to this dinner or a um, gathering of sort, is this deductible? Yes, but at 50%, keep in mind again, unless it's really for company uh, related, employee related as well, like just parties or company picnic, though would be 100%. But if it's for business purposes, that's about 50, that's 50%. So I would encourage you guys to really go through um, the examples that we had previously and just really run through them. If you have any specific, really specific situations that you won't be able to relate to these slides, yeah, feel free to contact your accountant and they can figure it out for you, especially because we will need to know that as we're doing the taxes next year. So in summary, this is a very clean and easy graph or table that um, you can refer to if you want to, you can take a screenshot, take a picture, and basically shows what the 2017 old rules which is before the TCJA and the 2018 Tax Cuts uh, Jobs Act really show. So entertainment, again, used to be 50%, now it's zero. You can't buy tickets to a football game for your client um, and you go with them, those don't count anymore. Um, so 2018 and 2019 table columns will be the same. So keep in mind, and then business meals with clients, again, 50% deductible, that's actually been the same um, since 2017 as well and prior. Office snacks used to be 100% deductible, now it's only 50. And company white party, still 100% across the board, across the years. Meals and entertainment, these are included in compensation. So this would, again, be recorded in the employee's W-2. That is 100% deductible. And so the summary for me is, personally is a go-to if I ever have any questions and I need to refer to somewhere. Yep, so pretty much that is it for the meals and entertainment. We have very specific examples. So um, that's probably all we have for this. And I'm gonna take some questions that we have on, um, that was sent to me. So can gift be a marketing expense? Is this different than the, these types of deductions? So gift itself, there's also different portions of it. Um, there's the employee gift, but there's also, if you're talking about client gift, so those are two different types of um, possibilities. Employee gift, I believe there is a limitation and I would have to check on the number of that, but there is a limitation on employee gifts. The client gifts, however, can be a marketing, um, more like marketing expense. So that would be covered in terms of being deductible, that would be 100%. Um, as long as you can justify that again as a marketing advertising client relationship kind of expense. However, employee gift would be different. Um, yep. Any more questions, feel free to put it in there. Um, I'll just recap a little bit as well. If you have any questions, feel free to email Catherine at communitycpa.com. She can get it to one of the accountants we have. And you can call 515-288-3188. That is our main number for all three of the locations. And um, it will ring once it 
you call that number. And we are open Monday through Saturday, six days a week from 8.30 to 5.30. Thank you very much for being here with us. I'll leave the contact information up here if you have anything that you want to um, check with us about. Happy New Year. Um, stay safe and stay warm, everyone. <laughs>